So the Holy Spirit is pneuma. He is the wind, the breath, and the current of air. So you find that although we may not see Him with our naked eye, the Holy Spirit is here. He is like the atmosphere that envelops us even right now. Like the wind, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He is omnipotent or powerful. And the Holy Spirit is unrestrained. So He cannot be domesticated. The wind blows as He wishes. So as the wind, the Holy Spirit has a wildness to Him. So you can say that there is this unpredictableness about the Holy Spirit. As such, we must not be afraid of what we do not know. We must not be afraid of what we have never heard of or what we have never done before. We must be willing to take risks and set sail in the wind of the Holy Spirit, breaking into the new. If we want to break into the new, you got to set sail like a vessel without a rudder in the wind of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is pneuma. He is the giver of life. In fact, He is the sustainer of life. Without the Holy Spirit, no one can be born again. You see, only God, the one who has created us and breathed life into our being, He can, He's the only one who can recreate us and give us a brand new life. So in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, Apostle Paul said, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So he's saying this, having now been born again, being made alive in the Spirit, let us walk in the Holy Spirit every single day of our life. And this morning, I want to talk to you about walking in the Spirit. You see, walking in the Spirit means being led, being directed by the Holy Spirit. We are being born again, made alive in the Spirit. From now on, how do we live our life? We've got to walk in the Spirit. In the epistles, in the book of Ephesians, Apostle Paul gave us an interesting image of how a person should be directed by the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, Paul said, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So here Paul draws a contrast between two things. He talks about being drunk with wine. Everybody say, be drunk. Be drunk. But then he talks about be filled with the Spirit. Everybody say, be filled. be filled. So when a person is filled or drunk with alcohol, he is controlled or dominated by alcohol. You see, the presence and the power of alcohol in his body, in his blood system, have overridden his normal abilities and actions. Take for example, a shy, timid guy suddenly can become as bold as a lion because of the presence and power of alcohol in his body. He may not have the natural, natural ability to sing. But suddenly, in the karaoke room, he'll pick up the mic and start belting out the song by Whitney Houston. he take on the big ones. Right? And I... I can't sing, right? We always love you. And he, he screamed and enjoyed himself. He couldn't care less what people are saying. People are laughing. His friends are laughing in the room, but the people will be looking at him and they will say, Aha, uh -huh, he is under the influence of alcohol. You know what? Being filled with the Holy Spirit is somewhat like that. It's to come under the influence of the Spirit. Instead of doing things 
only with your own ability or with your own strength. He now empowers you. Instead of doing what we know what to do or things that we think we can do, we are now guided by the Holy Spirit, influenced by the Holy Spirit to accomplish things that's beyond our imagination. Where it used to be that you do not dare to take up the mic, suddenly there is a bonus and influence that will encourage you to give you the courage to step out, breaking into the new. Paul says that we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, he used the phrase be filled. It means it is not a suggestion. He is expecting all Christians to be committed to this way of life. We are to be committed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Anything short of walking and living in the Holy Spirit, a Spirit-filled life, is less than God's plan and purpose for the believer. You see, in our world today, we, have, we are surrounded and influenced by so many self-help books, techniques, all kinds of therapies, that claim to bring transformation. And yet, so many times we feel powerless to overcome sin and temptation. Why? We have more equipment and technology for evangelizing the entire world. But yet, we find winning the lost so challenging. Why? Could it be that we lack this one thing? the fullness of the Spirit, to be totally influenced and dominated by the Holy Spirit in our life and ministry. You see, the, the early church, in the early church, in the book of Acts, they were described as people who are uneducated and untrained men. But yet, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they were known as those who have turned the world upside down. Because they live a life in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit. Now, another thing, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is not about possessing more of Him. It is not about having more of Him. You see, the Holy Spirit does not come in 50% now. And then 10 years later, He comes with his, the other 50%. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is a person. He doesn't come with His head first. Can you imagine you close your eyes, you see the Holy Spirit, you just see a head floating around. It's quite scary, right? The Holy Spirit is a person. When He comes, He comes. The Holy Spirit is infinite in power, only potent. He cannot be divided. When He comes, He carries with Him His being, the only potent, all-powerful being of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have less power today, and then He grows in power day by day. It is not about possessing more of Him. You see, the question is not how much do we possess or have the Holy Spirit. Rather, the question is how much does the Holy Spirit have us, dominates us, directs us, influences us, consumes us. You see, Jesus gave us a very beautiful example. He was fully dominated by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He is fully God. He is sovereign. He is only potent and omniscient. That means He knows all things. But yet, the Son of God came in human likeness, put on human flesh to live an ordinary human life, to show us how we should live our life here on this earth. 
He walked in the fullness of the Holy Spirit day by day. He fully depended on the Holy Spirit in his life and ministry. You see, Jesus did this to show us as human beings, this is how we should walk in the Spirit. Right from the start. In his ministry in Luke chapter 4, look at verse 1. It says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Everybody say, being filled. Everybody say, led by the Spirit. So Jesus was filled with the Spirit and fully led by the Spirit. Influenced, dominated, directed by the Holy Spirit. Even when He was led into the wilderness, He obeyed and followed. You see, usually, when the Holy Spirit lead us into some mountaintop experience, wow! You are more than willing to follow Him, to experience the glory of God. But when it comes to wilderness, oh, we say, no, 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 no way. But are you willing? Yet Jesus was fully willing, fully surrendered, dominated, directed by the Holy Spirit because He walked in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And when he walked in that fullness of the Holy Spirit, look at what happened in verse 14. It says in verse 14, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went through all the surrounding region. You know what, friends? Power comes when you are willing to be fully dominated, directed, surrendered to the Holy Spirit. In verse 18, in fact, Jesus himself testified. He said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Shall we all shout out loud? The Spirit of the Lord. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. In other words, He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That is why I can move in power. Notice, Jesus relates to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of the Lord. He is my Master. Wherever He leads, I go. I'm fully dominated, directed. I'm fully influenced by the Spirit of the living God. Totally surrendered. You see, all the saints of old that you read in the Bible, those saints who, are, who experience extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit, they are all people who are fully surrendered to the Holy Spirit. See, consider the lowly servant girl, Mary. In Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel came to Mary and announced to her, in verse 35, the, the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most, of the most high, the highest, will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So the Holy Spirit, come. When the Holy Spirit comes, He doesn't come 50%, but He comes as the power of the Most High. He said the Holy Spirit will come upon you. But how did Mary respond? I want you to see verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Total surrender, fully influenced, directed by the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Mary became the mother of Jesus, who carried the Savior into the world. You see, church, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be totally dominated, directed by the Holy Spirit. In 1920, John Sung 
went to America for his higher education. He was a brilliant student who earned a doctorate in just five years, very quickly, quickly, an array of career opportunities were opened up to him. However, John Sung felt the call of God on his life. As such, in 1926, he enrolled himself into Union Theological Seminary in New York City. Now, during one prayer meeting, one, one, during prayer one day, John Sung was suddenly baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said this, he said, the, the Holy Spirit poured onto me just like water on top of my head. Then the Holy Spirit continuously poured onto me wave after wave. After the experience, John was so radically transformed, set on fire, that he started preaching to his peers and his lecturers in the seminary. Now his change was so drastic that his fellow classmates thought that he had gone mad. So they reported him to the, the authorities in the seminary, they arrested him and confined him in a mental asylum for 193 days because they thought he went crazy. And, but during that 193 days while in the mental asylum, he read through the entire Bible 40 times. Upon release from the asylum, John returned to China without graduating from the seminary. While on the ship, John told the Lord, the old John Sung is dead. He doesn't want to rely on his accomplishment, his achievements, his, his academic abilities anymore. So like Apostle Paul, he prayed. He said, what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. So from now on, I will live fully for the Lord, surrendered, dominated, directed by the Holy Spirit. In November 1927, just before he reached China on the ship, he threw all his academic awards and diplomas into the sea. His dad and family were hoping that he would find a good job and help elevate the family poverty. But when they learned about John's decision, the whole family wept in bitter disappointment. Church, I want to ask you a question. Are you willing to fully surrender under the domination, influence, direction of the Holy Spirit? John Sung went on to become one of the greatest evangelists of the East. He was remembered as the John Wesley of China. In 10 years, John Sung preached the gospel and converted 100,000 people to Jesus Christ. Oh, won't you give the Lord a big hand clap? In fact, he brought revival to China, Thailand, Malaysia, and even in Singapore. Many of our churches in Singapore were started because of his ministry. Because if you live in the Spirit, church, we must walk in the Spirit. Shall we all say together, walk in the Spirit. And do not be drunk with wine, Paul says, but be filled with the Spirit. We cannot live without the Holy Spirit. See, another thing about Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It literally means be filled. It literally means keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, in the gospel, Jesus also taught about this continuous filling of the Holy Spirit. So let's look at John chapter 4. John chapter 4, look at verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water 
springing up into everlasting life. You know what? The water that Jesus is talking about is the Holy Spirit. Now, why is it that when we drink of this water, we will never thirst? Because when you drink of this water, this water in you becomes a fountain that keeps on flowing. If you can take in this water, this water becomes a fountain within you that keeps flowing, springing up into everlasting life. He repeats this again in John chapter 7. Look at John 7, 37. He said, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost be. Everybody say, innermost be. So from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit. So Jesus promised the Holy Spirit will be in you. Everybody say the Holy Spirit is in me. So it is not from without. He is in you. In other words, you every single day carry around you on the inside a fountain. So sometimes when we pray, our image, our mind, imagination is that the Holy Spirit coming from without like rain on us. Yes. But there is another image. It is the image of a fountain within. That when you close your eyes and pray, something from inside... Spring, it is like rivers of living water coming out of you because you're carrying a fountain on the inside of you, the fountain of the Holy Spirit. Oh, won't you give the Holy Spirit a big hand clap this morning? Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I have a fountain in my being. So he is the fountain of life, springing up with continuous flow of living water. In other words, you do not need to be afraid. Some of us are thinking, oh, I got to go for a work trip to a far away place. I cannot experience this kind of environment here in Suntec City. Let me tell you, you have a fountain following you. Don't be afraid. Even you are led into the wilderness. You look around. Everywhere is wilderness. Lack. Sickness. Disease. But don't be afraid, church, because on the inside of you, there is a fountain of living water that can quench every thirst. He is the Holy Spirit. You see, if the fountain of life is within us, then why aren't we experiencing the continuous flow of His life and power? Sometimes when we close our eyes and pray, we see a desert on the inside. No fountain, not even a single drop. Sometimes when you close your eyes and pray, reaching out to the Lord, all you can see is tohu vabohu. Right? Darkness on the face of the deep void. You see, the problem is not with the Holy Spirit. But the question we got to ask or answer this morning is what is blocking the flow of fountain from within? What has stopped this fountain? It is very clear that the Holy Spirit is that fountain and on the inside there is a fountain and He is springing up. But we don't experience it. Why? So the question is, what is stopping the fountain? What has hindered the work and blocks the work of the Holy Spirit? You see, in Paul's epistles, he mentioned two ways the Holy Spirit can be hindered in our lives. And this is my main message for this morning. Two things that can block the work of the Holy Spirit. Number one is grieving the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, Paul says, Do not grieve 
the Holy Spirit of God. Shall we all say together, do not grieve? He said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You see, what do you mean by grieving? You see, anything we do that is inconsistent to the nature of the Holy Spirit hurts Him and grieves Him. In other words, we can bring pain to the Holy Spirit by what we do, what we say. Now, grief can only happen in a love relationship. Okay, let me say it one more time. Grief can only happen in a love relationship. When there is love. Grief means to be sorrowful, sad, or distressed. And you know what? The Holy Spirit loves us. He loves us just as Jesus loves us. You see, in the, in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 30, Paul says, Now I beg you, brethren, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Holy Spirit, through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. You see, the Holy Spirit loves us. And because of love, that is why grief happens. See, let me give you an example. For example, let's say someone don't like your face, comes, and then criticize you and, and talk down on you and hurt you. But he's a stranger. You don't care. You just love it off and you walk away. But if it is your spouse, your children, if it is someone you dearly love, come and say something about you. It deeply hurts you. Why? Because you're in that relationship. You cannot just pack your bag and walk away. You, because you want to stay. You do not want to let go. You don't want to give up on this relationship. That's why it brings grief. Take for example, a father. You see, a, a good father always loves his son, whether he is good or bad. But when the son is bad, ayo yo, his father's love now is mixed with pain, sorrow, and anguish, right? Many of the relatives will come and tell the father, you know what? This girl's son, why are you still helping him, supporting him, giving him a, a place to stay. You should chase him out. You should do something. You should just cut off all relationship. Don't contact him anymore. Everybody advised the father, are you blind? Can't you see what kind of son this is? But the father, does the father know? No. Is the father hurting? Yes. But why did the father hold on? Because of the word love. Only in love. That's why there is grief. The Holy Spirit loves you. He will never, Jesus says, I, He will be with you always. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you an orphan. The Holy Spirit loves us. But when we do things that's inconsistent to His nature, we grieve Him. We hurt him. That's why. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Won't you turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So, what grieves the Holy Spirit? You see, anything that's inconsistent to his nature grieves him. So you've got to understand who is the Holy Spirit. You've got to know his nature. There are four things about the Holy Spirit. Number one. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Everybody say the spirit of truth. In John chapter 14 verse 17, it says the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So he is the spirit of truth. In other words, any falsehood, deceit, hypocrisy will grieve the Holy Spirit. In other words, let your 
speech. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Or I put it even more plainly, do not lie. Maybe some of you don't understand it. Let me say one more time. Don't tell lies anymore. Don't live in a lie anymore because lying grieves the Holy Spirit. Remember, in Acts chapter 5, there was a very solemn incident that happened in the church. A certain man by the name of Ananias and his wife, Sapphira, sold a possession, bought a part of the proceeds as an offering to the Lord. However, they lied that it was everything that they had. Maybe because they, they want to show off, we do not know. But nonetheless, they did not tell the truth. Look at verse 3, chapter 5, verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? And you know what? Ananias fell down, breathed his last, and died on the spot. You see, Satan's nature is a liar, but the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Truth, walk in truth, church, walk in truth. What is truth? Simply put it, truth is inside, outside, same. That means what you say, what you do, say, that is truth. What is truth? Truth is in, when you're at home, or when you're in school, sing. What is truth? Truth is when you're in church or when you're at work, sing. Truth is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sing. So you're not afraid of people seeing you when you're wearing your shorts, pajamas, because you are the same. You have nothing to hide because you're a person of truth. Amen? You see, sometimes we see church members or, or people come, not in City Harvest, I think. But people going to church, you no, know, they come on Sunday morning, they wear white suit, white tie, white shirt, white belt, white pants, white socks, white shoes, everything white, right? And then behind them seems there's a pair of white wings. They walk like an angel with, with a big Bible. They come to church and, God bless you. You look so good today. Hallelujah. But then, when the service ends, in a, at noon time, suddenly the white suit turned to a, a red suit, red belt, red pants, red shoes, and from behind came out a red tail. And on the, on the head came out two red horns. And then from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, live like the devil. Then on Sunday, come to church. Hallelujah. God bless you. Truth means you're the same. Truth means you live a life of integrity. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Church, let's walk in truth. Won't you give the Lord a big hand clap? The second thing about the Holy Spirit is that He is the Spirit of faith. He is the Spirit of faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, And since we have the same Spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe, therefore speak. So He is the Spirit of faith. In other words, unbelief, fear, worry, grief, the Holy Spirit. That is why, like what Pastor Ming shared with us in the offering message this morning, so often Jesus tells us, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry. The Bible, keep, if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the phrase, don't be afraid, do not fear, don't be afraid, do not fear, keeps appearing. Why? Because they are contrary to the nature of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. Now, I'm not saying that these feelings won't come. 
But what we need to do is don't abide in those feelings. Don't abide. The word abide means stay. Don't abide. Don't stay in unbelief, fear, or worry. Get out of it. So when you are afraid, what do you do? When I'm afraid, what do I do? You ask me, you say, Pastor, have you been afraid before? Every day. I have to confront fear every day, worry every day. But what do you do? You know what do I do? I put the word of God on the inside of me. Psalms 91, I'm memorizing in Chinese. Why? Because when fear comes, I refuse to abide in fear, unbelief or worry. I want to abide in the spirit of the living God. I want to draw from the fountain of life. And He is the spirit of faith. Wouldn't you give the Lord a big hand clap, church? That is his nature. That is why Paul says in 2 Timothy 1 7, for God has not, shall we shout out this verse? What a great verse. One, two, three, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. What a great verse. It deserves a clap offering to the Lord. Woo. Spirit of faith. Stay in faith. What grieves the Holy Spirit? You've got to understand His nature. Number three, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of grace. He is the Spirit of grace. Hebrews 10 verse 29 says, Of how much worse punishment do you suppose? Will He be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which He was sanctified a common thing? and insulted the spirit of grace. You see, whatever there is bitter, bitterness, malicious, ungracious, unforgiving, unloving, all this grieves the Holy Spirit. Stay away from bitterness. Stay away from resentment. Don't resent or bitter anymore. If you are abiding in unforgiveness, don't be unforgiving anymore because He is the Spirit of grace. What is grace? You see, the attitude of grace is gratitude and thanksgiving. That is why in Spanish, thank you is the word gracias. Grace. But the action of grace is giving and forgiving. If you want to walk in grace, give and forgive. Because much is forgiven, much you can give. We have been forgiven a great debt, we can forgive. But when we don't walk in gratitude or forgiveness, we grieve the Holy Spirit. You see, a few years ago, we have a SOT student from overseas. Now, she stayed in a hostel. She's, she was quite elderly. So, but nonetheless, because of the arrangement, we got to put her to stay with a couple of young people. So now you have this big age difference. But age difference is not a big thing. But the problem is the way they live their life. Right? For her... Her lifestyle at 8 o'clock lights off. But her roommates at 8 o'clock lights on. <laughs> Ready to party, man. At 9 p.m., silence because I need to sleep. But at 9 p.m. at night, the young people next door took out the guitar and started, I worship you, shouting and yelling and worshiping God. 
she, she, she confronted them. They said, we are being spiritual. Pastor said, we got to fast and pray. Day and night. So day we pray, night we pray, night and day. Let incense arise. So there is this big difference. Their lifestyle, the clashes, the, the way they, they cook in the kitchen, the way they wash their laundry, all kinds of differences. So every day, she was unhappy, angry, grumbling, complaining about the roommates. Every day when she come to, to SOT, she'll come to my office and say, Pastor, <laughs> so much so that she started having high blood pressure. High blood pressure. Few weeks later, she started hyperventilating. <gasps> One time during worship at SOT, morning praise worship time, she collapsed and fainted. The classmate got to bring her to the back room, fan her, and she came around. But the moment she came around, <laughs> so that week I decided, I will preach a sermon on forgiveness. I was preaching in the Chinese church. She attends the Chinese service. So that weekend, I prepared a message on forgiveness just for her. She has been praying for miracle, for healing, but the miracle is in this word called grace. Be gracious. So I preached the sermon, at the end of the sermon, and gave the altar call, and she was crying and crying, and the Lord touched her. At the end of the service, she walked to the front and said, Pastor, this is the, this is the word of the Lord for me. How did you know? But you know what? From that day onwards, she was totally healed of all high blood, high blood pressure, hyperventilation, fainting spells, and she graduated from the Bible school in seven months. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap, shall we? Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of grace. When you exercise giving and forgiving, immediately the fountain of life bursts forth with life, healing, miracles, power in your being. What is stopping that fountain of life? Number four, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. Holiness. Romans chapter one verse four says, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. Apostle Paul reminded us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, or oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is, within, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Where is the Holy Spirit? He is in you, the fountain of life. And we are to glorify God in our body. Like what Pastor Kong shared with us, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Therefore, do not say or do not do anything that will grieve the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus commanded us to be ruthless towards sin. Be urgent about it. Be decisive about it. Because He is the Spirit of holiness. He can't wait to burst forth from within you. So in Matthew 5, Jesus said, If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of the members perish than your whole body. Everybody say body then your whole body be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of the members perish than for your whole body. Everybody shout body. body. To be cast into hell. Why? Because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Anything that is inconsistent to holiness, lop it off, cut it off. 
Be decisive. Be urgent. Is it some of us? We are not urgent. We are not decisive. It is like the man who kept the monkey as his pet. He loves the monkey. But there's a problem with the monkey. The monkey has a long tail. Every time the monkey jumps around in the house, the tail keeps swinging left and right, knock down the vase, knock down the carbonate, the porcelain plates, all his antique collections are all broken. But the man loved the monkey. He doesn't want the monkey to go away. So he thought to himself, what shall I do? I want the monkey, but I don't want the tail. Aha, uh -huh. this is what I will do. I will take a knife and chop off the tail. But as he took the knife and he was about to chop the tail, he felt pain for the monkey. He said, if I chop off the tail all at once, the monkey will feel painful. This is what I will do. I will chop off the tail one small piece at a time. <laughs> this is exactly many people, how many people treat sin. How we treat our bad habits. We want to let go, we don't want to let go, let go, don't want to let go. We want to leave, we don't want to leave. Lop it off. Cut it off. <laughs> Catherine Kuhlman is one of the best known women evangelists in America. She carried such presence and power of the Holy Spirit that even before he, she preaches in a service, people were already healed of tumors and terminal illnesses. However, her ministry journey was not easy. She went through a very dark season of her life when she wanted her own ways and she entered into a wrong relationship with a married man. For eight years, her ministry spiraled downwards and plunged into failure. But then in 1944, Catherine Kuhlman decided to surrender to the Holy Spirit. And she had to make the very hard decision to cut off and leave that wrong relationship. She said, I had, no, I had to make a choice whether I serve the man I love or the God I love. I knew I couldn't serve God and Mr. referring to that man. No one will ever know how the pain of dying like I know it. For I love him more than I love life itself. And for a time I love him even more than God. I finally told him I had to leave. For God had never released me from my original call. The conviction of the Holy Spirit was almost unbearable. I was tired of trying to justify myself. So that day, Catherine Kuhlman cried out to the Lord. She prayed this prayer. She said, Dear Jesus, I surrender all. I give it all to you. Take my body. Take my heart. All I am is yours. I place it in your wonderful hands. And it was said that that day, Catherine Kuhlman was filled with the Spirit in a powerful way. And she went on to hold some of the biggest evangelistic meetings and had so many documented healings in American history because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Holiness. Won't you give the Lord a big hand, Claire? In closing, let me share with you the second things. There are two things that will stop the fountain. Number two is quenching the Holy Spirit. Quenching the Holy Spirit. Paul says, do not quench the Spirit. You see, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is like fire. To quench the spirit is like extinguishing fire. 
How do you extinguish a fire? Well, there are two ways you can extinguish a fire. Number one is you pour water. Okay, you can extinguish a fire by pouring water. Like poor Lan Suya. Criticizing, slandering, insulting the Holy Spirit. When you are ashamed of the work of the Holy Spirit, you are pouring water on the Holy Spirit. When a miracle happens, I say, ah, all these people are overzealous. What are you doing? You're pouring cold water on the Holy Spirit. Don't be ashamed, church, of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The word of wisdom, knowledge, prophecy, the gift of faith, healings, working of miracles, discerning of spirit, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues. Don't be ashamed. Don't pour water. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Number two, how do you quench a fire? It's when you stop adding fuel. When you don't add fuel, the fire stops burning. So how to keep the fire burning? Keep adding fuel. Don't stop praying. Don't stop your worship. Don't stop your, stop your Bible reading. Because at the end, you're going to receive a gift soon. Finish your Bible reading. Right? Add fewer. Don't stop coming to church. I know some of us, you, you take, you make a sacrifice to be here this morning. Keep coming. Keep doing that. Because when you do that, you will add fewer to the fire. The spring of life will come. So in closing, let me bring you back to John chapter 7, verse 37 to verse 39. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being, the Holy Spirit wants to come and abide in you. Every day you get, you carry within you a fountain of life. He who believes in me, he said, this inner being, from his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. And this, he spoke of the Spirit. Be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Be thirsty for him. That's why Jesus stood and cried out. The word cry out in Greek means krazo. It means to croak to scream, to shriek, to exclaim with deep emotion. When you pray, when you cross, when you cry out, you add fuel to the fire. And the spring of life bursts forth. Amen. Won't you give the Lord a big hand clap this morning? Shall we stand to our feet? And this morning I... I sense the Holy Spirit here in our midst. If you can stay for a few more minutes, in the next few minutes, it can change your life. Wherever you are, would you just reach out to the Holy Spirit this morning? Would you be like what Jesus said? Cry out. Would you cry out to that fountain of living water? Some of us, the fountain has, you have not been drawing from it. There are so many hindrances, blockages. But this morning, won't you come to the fountain of living water? Won't you come to the Holy Spirit? He loves you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. To sing you praise, the better world life may bring my way. I know that you are the God of my life. You are the one who holds it all.
easier this morning. For all eyes are closed. I can sense that the Holy Spirit is speaking to many of us here. Are you walking in truth? He is the Spirit of truth. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Maybe because challenges in life, in a sense of insecurity, you have been hiding, living a double life sense of rejection and as a result you have been not truthful to yourself to your own life but this morning the Holy Spirit loves you He will never leave you you can be yourself you can be real you can be authentic you can you can leave your, and He still loves you the same He will never leave you and off would you put away the life of a lie and put on truth because He is the Spirit of truth. Maybe some of us, the Holy Spirit speaking to your hearts, you have been dwelling in unbelief, worry. You have been dwelling in fear. Sometimes you feel that, you feel that oh, it, you can gain pity from people. But that is not the nature of the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of faith. Don't let unbelief overwhelm you. Don't let worry overwhelm your imagination. Don't let fear consume your being. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. Won't you put your trust in His Word? Won't you trust His promises? Won't you trust His nature? Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will never pass away. People may change, but God will never change. He is faithful. He is constant. He is trustworthy. He is my refuge and my fortress. Come to faith. Put on faith this morning. Or maybe some of us, you have been walking in resentment. You have been walking in unforgiveness. But this morning, won't you be gracious? Enough is enough. Enough of the anger, enough of the resentment. This morning, let's put off all bitterness, put off all unforgiveness. This morning, won't you reach out to the Holy Spirit and say, Cover me with your grace, clothe me with your grace, fill me with your grace. Or maybe some of us, like Catherine Kuhlman, you come to the end of yourself. There are things that you need to leave. There are things that you need to cut off. Today is the day. Let's be decisive. Let's be urgent. Because we want the Holy Spirit more than anything else. Holy Spirit, we treasure you. You are the fountain of life. We cannot live without you. You are the life sustainer. Holy Spirit. If that's you, wherever you are, you know that He's speaking to your hearts, there are areas of your life that you need to deal with. Today, let's turn this entire arena into a giant altar of the Lord. Let's surrender all. Let's surrender all. If that's you, wherever you are, won't you just lift both hands to the Lord? And for the next one minute, church, won't you pray like Catherine Kuhlman prayed? Won't you pray like how John Sung has prayed? Won't you cry out to the Lord and say, I surrender. I surrender, Jesus.
I surrender all. Take my body. Take my all. Take my all. I live for you. I live for you. I want to be led by you. I want to be led by you. Fully dominated. Fully dominated. Fully directed. Fully directed. By the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So fill me now. So fill me now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You are the fountain of life. You are the fountain of life. Spring up within me. Spring up within me. Living waters. Living waters. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Would you just reach out to the Holy Spirit right now? Let the river flow. Here he comes. Springing up from within me. Like bubbling up from within you like a spring coming up from within you life is coming to your feet I can sense some of us can feel energy coming from the inside of you faith rising up on the inside it is the Holy Spirit let the river flow there is a stream of power flowing through this place even right now. From within you, there is a stream of power, healing power, flowing, bursting forth from within you. Cancer is being healed even right now. Cancer be healed. Heart disease be healed. Every skin problem, receive your healing right now. watching online you are a parent your child is going through a difficult time in his health or her health you're crying out to God that the fever will break today the fever will break today life will come your child will be revived in the name of Jesus I come against every spirit of death I come against the thief that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I come against every assignment of the devil. In the name of Jesus, I bind you right now. Every death, go! 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 Oh, let the spirit of life, let the spring of life, the fountain of life spring forth in your family. Let the spring, the fountain of life spring Bring forth in your child. Life, I speak life. Be alive, be alive, be alive. Sikiri ala gala bara ala gala 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 bara ala gala bara. Sikiri ala bara 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 ala gala bara ala gala bara. Holy Spirit, more of your grace.
Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be in us forever. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God our Father, May the communion of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the fountain of life, be with us from this day and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. City Harvest, would you one last time give the Lord a big hand clap. Clap your hands, all you people. Would you shout to God with a voice of triumph? Somebody shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Wow! Let's keep this fountain of life flowing. Not just within us, but in our family, in our workplace, in our church, wherever we go. Let's bring life to people. Amen? Well, God bless you, church. Thank you for staying through, praying, worshiping God together. Won't you slap high five with someone and tell them, let's love the Holy Spirit more and more.